I love trains. Ever since I was a little kid, I have been obsessed with trains. My dad and I collect them. In fact, we have an entire train room. My dad and I once took a trip to Colorado just so we could ride on the historic railroad there. Well, some of my earliest memories involve trains. So why am I telling you that? Because do you know what would be amazing for me as someone who loves trains? A video game about trains. This here is Pocket Densha. It's part of a series in Japan called Densha Di Go, which is a hyper-accurate simulation of operating a bullet train in Japan. And if that's not some of the coolest shit I've ever heard, I don't know what is. Densha Di Go games are famous for the weird, wacky controllers they've come with. They have entire setups that mimic the engineer's view from the front of a Japanese bullet train. The only thing is that they're expensive and they're hard to find. They're only in Japan and some of the console versions require you to use a microphone and I can't speak Japanese. So Pocket Densha is the next best thing. It's a Game Boy installment of the series. So let's give it a try and see if the Densha to go gameplay holds up on a Game Boy. And for those wondering, yes, I'm playing this on a Game Boy player for the GameCube. Upon starting up, you're given a little beep beep. Ah, music to my ears. Upon pressing start, you're given three options, none of which I can read. Um, I'm just gonna choose the first one because that's the one that starts the game. Upon starting the game, you're given a choice between two routes based off actual Japanese train routes. I'm gonna choose the bottom train because that's the one that catches my eye. So this game is essentially a race against the clock. You're given the time you need to make it there and pretty much you gotta obey railway laws while doing that. You accelerate the train by pressing down, you brake by pressing up, and you use the X button, the GameCube controller, to honk your horn. The rest of the buttons don't really seem to do anything, but that's fine. Occasionally you'll get either an R symbol or a signal symbol or, or something else in the bottom left corner. R means reverse. Signal symbol means you should probably slow down and use your horn. And when you start to see the station appear, break like a fucking madman. Now this is based off Japan. You only have two and a half minutes to get to the first station, and the time decreases from there. It's very difficult if you don't blow your horn when you're supposed to, you're deducted five seconds. If you go too fast, deducted five seconds. If you break when you aren't supposed to, deduction. This game is incredibly difficult, but very satisfying. So as you get past each stage, or part of your route, I guess, your time constraints get tighter and tighter, and that's actually very accurate to how trains actually work in Japan. In Japan, apparently you're considered way late if you're more than two minutes late. Take that as an example, BC Transit. It's just timing, and once you get used to it, well, I consider you a certified engineer in Japan, in a video game. You know, trains are cool, but don't quit your day job. So that's it for today's episode. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Remember to like and subscribe if you're on YouTube, and if you enjoyed this. If you didn't, then don't do those things. And the same goes for you good folks on Vidme. Upvote and follow if you're so inclined. Remember to please comment any suggestions for future videos or reviews or vlogs down in the comments below, and I will see you next time.